Hi, I'm Rob. I have brick and mouth syndrome, and we're back again. I've managed to film two of them in one day and change my t shirts. Imagine you were to do that. So, hopefully, you know what's going on by now. I look at Reddit, they do imaginary lineups, so they think it'd be great for download festival. I look at them, I say if I'd go to it, and if I think it's actually a download lineup, or if it's more of a different festival. Because some of these in the past have been, um, shit. This one's a little bit of a shorter one, so hopefully I can drag it out so I can get it over eight minutes to one day get monetized. <laughs> but it has meant that it's cut off the one stage that I know less about. So it's probably better for me, but it does mean that they put less acts on here in general. We'll start from the lower stages, move our way up to the top of the main stage, and have a look-see at it. So we have no Dogtooth stage this week. We have, starting on the Avalanche stage, just the headliners. So, New Found Glory. New Found Glory, decent pop punk acts. There is, however, some questions about um, how dodgy they are, but when you look at pop punk in general, they're all a bit dodgy. So, um, maybe we're just gonna ignore that and say, yeah, yeah, probably should be all right, as long as it's proven they're not absolute scumbags. So we'll then move up onto the Opus stage, second stage, these stupid names really annoy me. So the all we have is Logo Dax, Good Charlotte into Five Finger Death Punch. Good Charlotte, again, there's some questionable dodgy stuff about that. Um, the only way this lineup's gonna get worse really is if they put lost profits on there, but I don't think that's the case now seeing as Stabby Stabby happened and everyone knows that guy's a piece of shit. Otherwise, this is a decent lineup. I would probably swap Charlotte and Five Finger Death Punch because Death Punch suck and Good Charlotte have that long long and Good Charlotte have that longevity and that history to them where it might be a bit more fun for the older crowd to go have their angry incel um, pop punk going on. Fucking incel anthem of the century. So ignoring that trash fire, we will go on to the main stage where we have Cannibal Corpse into Skindred. It's not a download line of about Skindred anymore, it seems. Oh well. Decent, it's a bit odd having Cannibal Corpse that high up, but I suppose they don't take themselves seriously. It would be a bit different, be a bit fun, and we'd get a bit of a heavier crowd on there for that one. Then onto the logo bands, we have Megadeth, into Limp Bizkit, into System of a Down. Now, that says high school to me. That was probably a year 10 um, playlist that we had. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Um, Limp Bizkit could probably be higher, especially with the issues that System are having within the band at the moment, and Limp Bizkit are actually doing really well touring. But overall, that is a decent lineup. You've got that classic act going into, yeah, two more classic act, classic acts at this point. But Limp Bizkit and System will be fun. It would feel like 2000s all over again. So for the older generation, we could come in and we could enjoy it. It would be fucking sweet. So on to day two, we just have that logoed act on the Avalanche stage, which is... Rancid. Fun, more hardcore punk out there, so we're getting away from that pop punk edge of the first day on the Avalanche stage, um, but sadly again, dude's a bit questionable. Um, <laughs> I need to have a disclaimer at this point for every questionable band that comes up. As far as Avalanche stage goes, that's a good, it's a good headline for it, and it makes total sense. Possibility they could be on one of the larger stages, but won't hold it against them. Let's have a look and see if they'd fit. Over onto that open stage for those logo acts, we have Alkaline Trio into Sum 41. It's decent. Um, sadly, Sum 41 would be on their retirement tour now, so I don't know if they do that or if they go finish their time in Slam Dunk because it seems to be more their jam now. Um, but it's a decent idea. It fits, it works, it's so far feeling very download. Onto that main stage we have Transplants into Ice Nine Kills, which for two non-logoed acts, that's very good. Ice Nine Kills have been killing it in recent years. They're getting more well-known, more popular, and they are really creeping up that lineup, which is brilliant. 
So Logo Dax, we have Tenacious D into Pantera, then into the legends of pop punk themselves, recently reformed Blink-182. Blink-182, 182, whatever the hell you want to call it, I'm not starting it. If you want to have an argument in the comments, go down and do it. Go down and do it, that'll be fun. Tenacious D I'm not fussed by, I've made that clear in history, but they are what they are, they're fun, but they're not great. Pantera, uh, they're Pantera. They're not really Pantera though these days, are they? So I don't know if they should be there, let alone the issues you have with the band members there, I forgot about that one. And Blink, they're Blink, they are legends for a reason, recently reformed, cancer survivors at this point, cancer survivor in there at this point, so they would deserve that, and the fact they haven't done it previously is fucking disgusting. So on to day three, down on the avalanche, we have headlining Halloween. Now, if there was a dog tooth stage, I'd say stick those guys on it because they should be headlining it, and that makes total sense. There's a possibility of the history of them. They, again, should be higher up. But this guy's pulled some really cool stuff for this stage that could be higher. If they're headlining there, it makes total sense. Can't really argue with it. So we're just going to ignore all this, and jump straight onto second, onto the Opus. Headline acts we have, The Distillers and Falling in Reverse. Distillers have pulled out multiple times now for unknown issues. I don't want to go into it. I don't really care that much. It, be brilliant to see Brody on stage again, but I think there's something there that's preventing her from doing shit over here, which just sucks. And falling in reverse, I know the dude's got a questionable history, but it does seem like he has sorted his shit out. Um, I believe his federal issues are now sorted, so he can leave the country, which is great, and there is enough of a following now for that band that they would really deserve that slot as the second map, as the second stage headliner. Um, I like what he puts out, I think it's fun, I think it's different, and I don't think being wasted out of a brain and just being there when someone kills someone else is a reason for him to have his life ruined. So <laughs> we'll ignore all the dodgy questionable content, and this guy really has made a questionable lineup. I'm really, really waiting for someone to make Pedo Fest at this point. Because my god, it's just going to be a pop punk fiasco. It'll probably be a fucking warped tour poster. You just put up a warped tour poster. That'll do it. <laughs> so we're going to ignore all of this and we go straight over to the main stage where we have starting out Europe into Cheap Trick. Honestly, not bad. Um, I'm not sure whether Europe would be worth it because as they learned last time they did a download festival, they play their one track. Everyone fucks off somewhere else. Um, just don't open with Final Countdown and you should be alright. Save it till last and just your set. It makes sense. Cheap Trick are decent. They've got that history behind them. Let's have a look, see going up. So, Logo Dax, we have Weezer, followed by The Offspring, and into Avenged Sevenfold. Now, this is definitely feeling like a more older festival in general at this point. But Weezer, band I've wanted to see forever, they, however, have ridiculous extortionate prices on their tickets, play the same set every time, and it's very fucking annoying. So I'm quite glad I've never spaffed the money out to go and see them. The Offspring would be fun, um, probably do deserve the slot above Weezer, but there again are questions that Offspring could do headline. But I'm previously fucked here. But I think they should be up there at least. This is a decent one. And Avenge Sevenfold. Now, there's rumours and leaks so far for next year where Avenge should be headlining it if the leak is true so far. And they've got new albums coming out. Sadly, I don't think they've released anything decent since Backcountry. So, looking at just the headline acts for this festival System of Down, Day 1, Blink 182, Day 2, and Avenge Sevenfold, Day 3. That feels very much like a classic download lineup. That is a download lineup, and I would probably buy a ticket for it if that was the announcement. Not as quickly as I would for last week's one, but hey, it is what it is. It's a decent one. And it probably would be a buy, but I'd probably wait for a few more. It would not be an instant buy. So that's this week's lineup. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll try and chat with you guys about it. Let me know if there's any switches, anything you change up, and if you go to it. It's a, it's a decent lineup, but I can understand. I can definitely see why this would not appeal to everyone. Till next time. See you.